thought I told him to spray it with water to retain moisture before applying the film. You can't treat a glaze lily like a cactus. If Sanjay does this again, the loss will have to come out of his food expenses. Uh, I'll go talk to him. At this rate, he won't even be able to afford eating cacti for much longer. Hey, Tainari! Oh, <laughs> it's you two. It's been a while. What brings you to Port Ormos? We didn't have anything to do, and this place looked pretty lively, so we decided to stop by. But, uh, what's with all the flowers around here? Well, Port Ormos is currently organizing a flower exhibition featuring flowers and plants from all over Tevat, so I came to help out. The exhibition includes flowers from every corner of the world, each with their own unique properties and needs. With that in mind, the curator commissioned a flower pot from Kasharuar capable of retaining heat and moisture. Even so, an expert is still required to develop tailored transportation and care plans for each type of flower. It is you, right? Not this time, no. I'm just here to help out. The expert in charge is someone else. Mr. Tainari! Sanjay! He, uh... He confused the poisonous bulbs with garlic shoots, and he ate them! Uh, never mind. Forget about what I said about the food expenses. Apologies, Traveler, Paimon. Looks like I've got something to take care of. I'll be back in just a moment. I know he's busy no matter where he is, huh? Yeah, seems like it. Hey, don't look at Paimon like that! Paimon is super careful about what she eats. Well, looks like Tainari might be busy for a while. Let's take a look around the port in the meantime. Rainbow roses, glaze lilies, and Cecilia's? No wonder. It's... it's getting worse. Why? Look <laughs> you! <laughs> but, uh, I was... I just a moment ago. She didn't even eat anything weird. Ah, a moment of your time, you two? If it's not too much trouble, perhaps you could try this incense. aren't from Sumeru either. Seen as we're both travelers from abroad, it's only right that we help each other out should the occasion arise. Oh, so you're here for the flower exhibition too? Hmm, I suppose that's accurate. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Emily, a perfumer from Fontaine. Paimon is Paimon. Thank you so much for your help just now. Oh, and this is... The Traveler, right? I've heard a lot about you from the Steambird. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. What happened back there? Why did Paimon start sneezing all of a sudden? Hmm. Have you ever heard of hay fever? To put it simply, 
when inhaled, certain pollens can trigger abnormal physical reactions. Uh, but Paimon has seen these kinds of flowers before and nothing weird happened then. Well, we're all different. The factors that can trigger a reaction to certain stimuli vary by person. In isolation, the effects of certain pollens may seem minimal, but inhaling various types at once can trigger a more overt reaction. But there's no need to worry. Pollen allergies can be effectively mitigated with the use of medication. Oh, well, that's good. Traveler, Paimon, there you are. Is everything all right? I left in such a hurry, I forgot to warn you about all the pollen in the air. Emily? Ah, what a coincidence. Looks like my worry was misplaced then. The Traveler and Paimon are in good hands. It was nothing, really. We happened to run into each other shortly after my arrival, and I offered them a bit of help, that's all. I'm more curious as to why you thought the Traveler and Paimon were in danger. Allergies are highly unpredictable. If you were concerned the pollen might trigger a reaction, that must mean something similar has happened in the past. Remember the first time we met? You fainted after inhaling Spirit Borneal. The Spirit Borneal didn't affect Paimon at all, and now she's the one suffering! It makes no sense! It's not really something you can make sense out of, Paimon. There are all kinds of allergies out there, caused by a variety of different factors. Some people are even allergic to almonds. It's not something you can generalize. Exactly. I even encountered a case in Fontaine where someone had an allergic reaction to soba noodles their family brought back from Inazuma. Whoa. Good thing Paimon isn't allergic to anything delicious. Hmm. In a manner of speaking, although you could say the patients I deal with are rather unusual. In addition to medicine, Emily is also very knowledgeable about botany. She's taught me a lot about the native flora around Fontaine. And that's where my expertise ends, I'm afraid. When it comes to breadth of knowledge, Tainari certainly comes out on top. A flower expert? Oh, Paimon's got it! You must be the expert Tainari mentioned, the one in charge of the exhibition! Uh, wrong again, I'm afraid. Well, I did come for the exhibition, but only to inquire about the Auguste variety. I'm not involved in any official capacity. Oh, Paimon was sure she got it right this time. It's a kind of flower that was once popular in Fontaine. The perfume made from it also bears the same name, Auguste. Auguste, huh? That's not a name you hear often nowadays. In an ancient language, the word is said to mean sacred or noble. It's sometimes used as a name for people as well. Ah, that reminds me. Are you familiar with a historical event in Fontaine known as Perfume Mania? Perfume Mania was an event that occurred in Fontaine nearly 20 years ago. It all started when several merchants released their own lines of high-end, expensive perfumes, marketing them as must-have luxury products, the very symbol of elegance itself. No one anticipated the absolute frenzy this would create on the market, causing the price of perfumes to skyrocket. The demand was twofold. What some saw as a status symbol, most saw as a money-making opportunity. You could take advantage of the soaring price by hoarding them and reselling at even higher margins. The value of these products became so inflated, regular bottles of perfume were even going for hundreds of thousands of mora. This resulted in countless disputes and scams. But at the end of the day, perfume is just perfume. The market value greatly exceeded the intrinsic worth of the product, creating an economic bubble that was never going to last. Luckily, the Palais Mermonia recognized the danger and intervened before the craze could truly spread. Many profiteers and scammers were thrown in jail as a result. In the end, only a few wealthy families were affected when the bubble popped. What does all this have to do with that Auguste you mentioned earlier? Well, 
During the craze, the most popular perfume was none other than Auguste. The demand far exceeded the supply, to the point where it once sold for 10 million mora a bottle. 10 million? Then what about now? After the mania ended, most perfumes returned to a normal price. Auguste was the only exception. Its namesake, the flower used to create it, went extinct. As a result, no new bottles of Auguste have been made, and the value of the perfume remains exceedingly high. Indeed, the Auguste flower was not a natural variety, you see. It was specially cultivated for use in perfume making. When the bubble popped, all the flower beds used for its cultivation were destroyed in a fire. The variety has never been seen since. But didn't you say you came to the exhibition to look for it? Ah, oh, yes. I came to investigate a certain rumor that the Auguste flower has reappeared in Sumeru. It's causing quite the stir in the Fontaine perfume market. Traveler, we should help Emily look for it. I have to agree. Emily wrote me to ask if I could look into the rumor, but the forest rangers haven't received any reports of new plant species recently. Even if I can locate the flower, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed, Paimon. I don't have any Grand Mora making endeavors planned. Ah! Divine, noble, one of a kind, all beautiful sentiments to be sure, but to me, they overshadow the very essence of the product. When it comes to perfume, I want people to forget the price and the prestige and focus on the beauty of the fragrance itself. Wow, so noble. Of course, there's also a more practical reason. In recent years, low-grade counterfeit versions of Auguste have been popping up on the Fontaine perfume market. Every so often, someone will claim to have recreated the unique scent of Auguste, and the rumor mill will start comparing the counterfeits to my own work. Okay, that's more like the reason Paimon had in mind. Ever since that rumor started, three new perfumes claiming to be made from the Auguste flower have appeared on the market. If I can dispel the fanaticism surrounding a goose, even just by proving the rumor to be false, Fontaine's perfume market can finally start to get back to normal. Then I'll be free from all the stories and added meaning and just focus on making what I like. That makes sense. Oh, I would of course be grateful for your help, but I wouldn't want to trouble you. Well, you said it yourself. We're both travelers from abroad, so it's only right that we help each other out. Huh. I suppose you're right. Then you have my thanks. Based on the information I have so far, it's unclear if the rumor is true. Mr. Edgar also thinks it's too early to say, but you could always go talk to him. He was there all those years ago, after all. Maybe he'll know something. Huh, I was just about to pay him a visit at the hotel. Edgar? Who's that? The person you've been trying to guess this whole time. The flower expert in charge of the exhibition. He's also the most respected and experienced perfumer in the area. Back when he was still working in Fontaine, Auguste was his creation. I should also mention, he was my teacher, the one who taught me the basics of perfumery when I apprenticed in Sumeru. So this guy was a famous perfumer in Fontaine, but then he came to Sumeru to teach people from Fontaine? It sounds confusing. It's a long story. If you're interested, we can talk more about it when we see him. He should be staying near the hotel. Apparently, the exhibitor paid a large sum to rent out the hotel and surrounding buildings. They're being used as temporary storage facilities and lodging for exhibition personnel. Yeah, what if guests come early? They won't have anywhere to stay. Also, renting out this big of a hotel, how are they going to make that more back? Heh, 
<laughs> it's been so long. I almost didn't recognize you, Edgar. Well, you and your brother haven't changed a bit. Oh, yeah. Look, all this catching up is nice and all, but let's get down to business. We need to talk about Kyria. Is he... Hold on. We have guests. It's nice to see you again, Master. Emily? Is that you? <laughs> oh, it's been years. Look at you. You're all grown up. I've heard you've become quite the famous perfumer in Fontaine. It would seem the student has surpassed the master. Oh, well, it's all thanks to your mentorship. Ah, hardly, hardly. I taught you the basics. Hearing you call me master, well, I'm not sure I'm deserving of that title. I've taught many students here in Sumeru over the years, but I've yet to see one turn out quite as accomplished as you. You're the only one who can take credit for that success. And who are these two? I don't recall you mentioning them in your letter. Ah, they're my new friends, the Traveler and Paimon. Emily's friends. Well then, the pleasure is all mine. And these two gentlemen? Are they friends of yours, Master? <laughs> <laughs> of course! We're perfume merchants from Fontaine. I'm Oud, and this here is my younger brother, Blaze. Edgar and the two of us are old friends. <laughs> Isn't that right, gentlemen? <laughs> uh, yes. Merchant brothers? You must be here to look for the August flower, then. Huh? <laughs> well, what respectable perfume merchant hasn't heard of a goose? Anyone in the business would be interested in the rumors. I'm guessing you're here for the same reason, Emily. Uh, we were just about to get into it, so you three might as well join in. I commissioned a few Eremites to do some scouting for me. They searched all over Sumeru, but there were no sightings of the Auguste Flower. That being said, there are people in Port Ormos who claim to have smelled a unique fragrance on the streets. Definitely floral, but still distinct. Some of them were merchants who lived in Fontaine twenty years ago. According to them, the fragrance smelled exactly like the Auguste they remember from back then. A one-of-a-kind, divine, and noble scent. Hmm. Maybe someone around here just happens to have a bottle of Auguste from back then. No, I don't think so. I doubt that's the case. Even if someone had a bottle that was never opened, the fragrance of the perfume would have changed over time. Very few perfumes can go decades without a change in scent. A goose is even more prone to that kind of shift. Only a few bottles still exist in Fontaine, and their scent would have completely degraded by now. Although, could there be a flower out there with a similar fragrance? Or an accord with the same base notes? Impossible! If a goose were that easy to replicate, it would never have sold for such a high price all those years ago. The Auguste flower is back. It has to be. Technically speaking, the scent wouldn't be impossible to imitate. Well, let's table that question for now. Uh, Edgar, did any of those people mention where the scent was coming from? No. Uh, by the time they realized they had smelled something, the scent was already gone. If I hadn't asked about it, they probably wouldn't have given the experience a second thought. Compared to things we see and hear, smells can be much easier to overlook. Hmm, it almost sounds like someone wearing the Auguste fragrance past them on the street. Wait, are you saying... <laughs> Just thinking out loud! <laughs> don't pay me any mind. We don't have much to go off of right now, but we can't rule out that possibility. I'll send some more people to investigate. You all traveled so far to be here. Why don't you rest in the hotel for a bit? Uh, Oud, Blaze, this is the key to your room. Ooh, you've got 
the keys to the rooms? Do we get free lodging too? Ah, my apologies. All the rooms in the hotel are accounted for, I'm afraid. Most are being used for storage ahead of the exhibition, you see. I managed to tidy up one of the rooms for these two at the last minute, but by the time Emily wrote to me, there was no more space left for her to stay. Oh, and we just showed up out of the blue. Guess that means there's definitely no space for us. Uh, I should have been more considerate. Here I am with an entire hotel at my disposal and no place to offer you to stay, even after you made the trip all the way to Sumeru. Don't worry, Master. I can sleep on the boat tonight, or I could even camp in the wild. It would give me the opportunity to collect some plant specimens while I'm here in Sumeru. Ah, even better. Although, would it be possible for me to leave some of my luggage here? It would be rather cumbersome to take it camping. It shouldn't take up too much space. Well, uh, about that. <laughs> of course, no trouble at all. My brother and I will keep an eye on them for you, uh, as long as you don't mind, mademoiselle. All right, then. Uh, Oud, why don't you take Emily inside and find a suitable place for her luggage? I'll prepare some refreshments and join you in a bit. is going to be huge! No, that's a florist thing. We work closely with the essential oils of various plants, but to maintain a sharp sense of smell, most perfumers prefer to keep their homes free of strong odors. Oh! Guess there's just too much to store for the exhibition then. Oh, this room seems to be a connected suite, and my brother will be staying on the other side of the suite. Blaze, while you're out, why don't you bring our luggage over as well? Hmm, <laughs> Blaze! Oh, uh, ah, yes, of course. All right, then. Uh, where can we find your luggage, mademoiselle? Blaze will go fetch it for you. It's still at the port. In addition to some daily necessities, there's also a case of amber wine that I brought back from Fontaine. Could I trouble you to bring that back as well? It would be the perfect way to repay you for your hospitality. <laughs> How generous. I should thank you on my brother's behalf. You've stumbled upon his weakness. He's aloof about most things, but alcohol is his one true love. Is that so? Mr. Ood, Mr. Blaze, thanks for... Hey! What are you doing? <laughs> That's Master's voice. Edgar! Master! Hey, Edgar! Are you alright? Can you hear me? <laughs> Who did this? K K Kyria. August. Ugh. 
Materia. Hey, Edgar? Edgar! No, don't shake him. He's injured. Just leave him to me. You two can... Oh, thank you. I checked. It doesn't look like anyone passed through here. Oh, but that's impossible. It's not like that kid can just grow some wings and fly away. Oh, uh, the culprit, I mean. <laughs> it's not like the culprit could have just disappeared into thin air. That strange smell around here. Is it coming from this bottle? did this was hiding in the flowers before they attacked Edgar? The most important thing we can do now is focus our efforts on treating Master. Can you help me move him inside? So, how's he doing? When I administered emergency treatment, I discovered a residue in his nose and mouth. Master was most likely forced to ingest a certain liquid. He's still unconscious, and inducing vomiting could obstruct his airways. We'll have to look into other clues for now. Ah, yes. The scent is the same, but the chemical composition is still unclear. We'll have to do further tests to determine if it's the same liquid, and how toxic it is to the human body. But first, I do believe there are two people who could shed some light on the situation. Mr. Sylvain, Mr. Lucian... Wait, you know... Hey! <clears throat> Were you talking to us, mademoiselle? I'm afraid we'd never heard of those names before. <laughs> hmm. Before arriving in Sumeru, I asked a friend from the Special Patrol to look into the creators of Auguste. There were four people in total. The perfumer, Edgar, the one thrust into the limelight, and three others. A researcher from Sumeru responsible for cultivating the Auguste flower, and two merchant brothers responsible for promoting the product on the market. The two brothers capitalize on the mythos surrounding Auguste. Their actions lured in numerous speculators and profiteers, inflating the price of Auguste even further. In the end, they were sent to the Fortress of Meripede for falsifying their accounts and destabilizing the market. If you do the math, they should be out of prison by now. Huh. And what does that have to do with us? There are countless merchant families in Fontaine. Uh, you gonna accuse them of being criminals too? Every time your brother called you Blaze, it took you several seconds to respond. But when I called you Lucian just now, the name registered immediately. I... Ah, oh, Miss Emily, out of respect for your position as a famous perfumer in Fontaine, I'm inclined to believe that was simply a poor attempt at humor. You have a bright future ahead of you. You wouldn't want to develop a reputation as someone who throws around false accusations, especially among merchant circles. Hmm. You claim to be regular perfume merchants, and yet, when I brought up amber wine, you took it to be alcohol. <laughs> What? 
Amber Wine is a perfume I created several years ago. It wasn't particularly renowned, but I'm certain any respectable perfume merchant in Fontaine would know of it. Unless, until recently, they were living somewhere completely cut off from the perfume world. Hmm, somewhere like the Fortress of Meripede, perhaps? Emily, you little... <laughs> Don't misunderstand, Mr. Sylvain. I don't bring this up to criticize you. No matter what happened all those years ago, the court has already passed its judgment. But Master's life is in danger. We need to learn whatever we can about the person who has done this. If Master's attack had something to do with a goose, I would imagine the two of you might also be in danger. So I'd like to trouble you for some information, if I may. Tell me about Kyria. <sighs> Fine, as you wish. T Sylvain! Lucian, if this will help us find Kyria, then it will be all worth it. Besides, we've already told most of the stuff to the Maison Orly, anyway. You were right, Miss Emily. There were four of us at the beginning. Myself, Lucian, Edgar, and a researcher from Sumeru in charge of flower cultivation, Vijava. Sometime down the road, the Mara Chaussée Phantom came knocking, saddled us with a list of accusations, and started looking into our books. Oh, they did their meddling, and my brother Edgar and I were forced to serve time in the fortress as a result. Sounds like he's still upset about that. Wait, then how did Edgar end up in Sumeru? Master was convicted as an accomplice, so he only had to serve a few years. He decided to move to Sumeru so that he could put those events behind him. Still, Master was depressed for a long time after that. He stopped making new perfumes and focused on introducing students to the craft instead. That's how I met him. My parents had to relocate to Sumeru for work when I was a child, so I had the chance to study under him for a little while. But we can talk about that some other time. I want to hear more about this researcher, Vijava. Like us, Vijava was also staring down an investigation from the Mara Chaussée Phantom. But before the Phantom showed up at her door, she set all the flower beds on fire, along with much of the mora we managed to earn. All the auguste flowers, everything we worked to create, was reduced to nothing but a pile of ash. What? Destroying all that evidence, wouldn't that make things worse for her? It didn't matter at that point, because she died in the fire as well. What? <sighs> Sounds like you did an investigation of your own. Why even ask us if you knew all of this already? The name wasn't mentioned in any of the files I reviewed either, but you two seem quite familiar with him. Uh, Kyria was Vijava's younger brother. He was just a clueless kid back then. Somewhere in his teens, I think. He helped his sister with her work sometimes, but that was pretty much it. He didn't have any idea what we were doing. Vijava kept him close most of the time. The three of us were probably the only ones who even knew she had a brother. After our operation was compromised, he disappeared. There were no signs of him until recently, when people started saying the Auguste flower had reappeared in Sumeru. So you think Kyria took something with him back then? Something that allowed him to reproduce the Auguste flower? <sighs> Vijava doted on the kid like you wouldn't believe. She even told us to give her cut to her brother if anything happened to her. If she left something behind before she died, believe me, Kiri is the one that has it. And judging by the liquid in that bottle, the Auguste flower wasn't the only thing he reproduced. He managed to replicate the perfume itself. So the liquid Edgar was forced to ingest really was Auguste. Wait, does that mean Auguste is poison? <clears throat> 
Poison? No, no, of course not. No perfume is meant to be ingested. Even small amounts can be dangerous, let alone ingesting a whole bottle at once. If a goose could be considered a poison, we wouldn't have even sold half a bottle back then. Edgar fell unconscious because Kyria forced him to drink perfume. It just happened to be a goose. <laughs> he probably thought we had something to do with his sister's death. But to tell you the truth, I have no idea why she did all that. We're not looking for Kyria because we have it out for him. We just wanted to see how he was doing. And, if possible, work together to bring back a ghost. We only went to prison for a bit of fraud and market manipulation. It had nothing to do with the product itself. As long as we keep things honest this time around, bringing the product back to market would almost be like honoring his sister's memory. So that's why you never mentioned Kyria during your interrogation? Yes, exactly. We were just looking out for the kid. Anyway, that's all we know. If you're looking for information on what's in a goose, or what to do if you ingest it, there are only two people to ask. Edgar or Kyria himself. Well... At least we're able to say for certain that the substance Edgar ingested was, in fact, a goose. That gives us a direction for further testing. <sighs> well, then, I'd say that was a very enlightening discussion. Ah, well, glad to hear it. Lucian, let's head back to the room and rest a bit. With everything that's happened, there are things that need reconsidering. Yes, of course. Hmm. Ah, oh, you think so too? Hmm. That does seem to be the case. Pity we don't have more evidence. But based on Sylvain's tone of voice just now, I suspect further questioning will only result in more made-up answers. The way you exposed them like that, just based on a hunch, that was genius! Oh, right! Earlier you said you were only sort of a doctor, and that your patients were... unusual. Oh, yes. That's because most of the patients I encounter are already dead. So you're a... forensic doctor? Close. I'm actually a forensic cleaner. Once the forensic team and the Mara Chassé Phantom are done collecting evidence from the scene, I'm in charge of clearing away the final traces my patients leave on the world. In fact, with just a small alteration to the formula, the same tincture used as the base of perfume can also be made into a cleaning agent. Basically, there are two sides to forensics. Those who collect evidence to expose the truth, and those who clean up the smells, bloodstains, and other substances left behind at the scene. I've learned a lot in my line of work, and I've witnessed a lot of death. But this time, we may still save the patient. Actually, Traveler, could I trouble you to report back to Tainari and the officers at Port Armos? We should update them on the situation. I'll stay here and continue to look after Master. Now that we have a sample of Auguste, I'm hoping further analysis won't be too difficult. Master looks a lot older than when I last saw him. I just hope he can hold on. Why the rush? Did something happen? 
What? Edgar was attacked? He's the most famous perfumer in the region. Someone who's helped countless people around Port Ormos. How could this happen? Sheriff, have you received any reports of a suspicious individual fleeing through the bazaar? No, but we've got eyes all over the area. I'm sure someone's seen Kyria. I'll start gathering my forces. We won't let him get away. What about you, Tainari? Do you have a plan? Hmm. I'm sure the sheriff can handle things over at the scene, and I doubt Emily needs my help looking after Mr. Edgar. Uh, but she said she's not a real doctor. Then she was far too modest. She may not be a doctor by trade, but she has a deeper understanding of human anatomy and pharmacology than most scholars from the Amorta Darshan. Not to mention the fact that Mr. Edgar's condition is related to perfume. Emily is certainly in the best position to help him. As for me, I'll head to the Academia and see what I can learn about Vijava and Kyria. Oh, that's right! Vijava was supposed to be a scholar from Sumeru. Do you recognize the name? From Emily's letter, certainly, but that was the first time I'd heard of it. The Academia produces a lot of scholars, and there are plenty of graduates who choose to pursue a career outside their darshan. I didn't have time to look into it earlier, but now it seems like Vijava's past could be critical to getting to the bottom of what happened to Mr. Edgar. I have friends in Sumeru City that can help me investigate. With any luck, we'll have news to share by tomorrow. I'll leave you and Emily to watch over things here in Port Ormos. Yesterday. We should check on things at the hotel first. No longer in critical condition, thankfully. He's still very weak, but with a bit more rest, he should regain consciousness soon. My chemical analysis of a goose also went smoothly, although it certainly raised some questions. Mm -hmm. I was able to identify the components that give the substance its fragrance, but I also noticed an abnormal trace of elemental energy in the sample. Elemental energy? Hard to say. It was such a minute amount, proportionally speaking. Like mixing a single drop of perfume into the ocean. I had to use one of the newest tests developed in recent years to even detect the traces present in the sample. Unless you were abnormally sensitive to elemental energy, I doubt it would have any effect, even if you use the product every day for 10 years. As for whether Master's condition was caused by the elemental energy present in the sample or some other component of the perfume, it's still too early to say. Oh, that reminds Paimon. Did Tainari come and find you? Maybe we could ask him to take a look. Hmm. I received a message from him last night, but I haven't heard anything since. The message said he was looking into some information at the academia. Oh, Paimon 
thought he might have stopped by to see you first. Um, excuse me? Is Miss Emily here? Oh, perfect! Familiar faces! Traveler, Paimon, you're here too! Kale. Ah, oh, of course. Hainari's apprentice. He's mentioned you many times. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. And please, no need for formalities. Emily is just fine. Oh, uh, uh okay. Nice to meet you too, Miss, uh, <laughs> Emily. Did Tainari send you here, Kale? Yep. Master and the others went through decades worth of records last night and still haven't had a chance to rest. I'm fast on my feet, so it only made sense for me to come and give you an update. Anyway, based on what they've reviewed so far, they believe there's no indication that a researcher by the name of Vichava ever passed through the Academia. Master considered that possibility as well, but the name wasn't the only dead end. Master tried to track down people with a similar research direction or background, but also couldn't find a match. How is that possible? It's starting to seem very likely. If we want to figure out her true identity, I'm afraid another conversation with those two merchants might be our only... Hey! L Lucian! It's Sylvain! Wait, you don't think Kirio came back, do you? That seems impossible. If someone came in or out of the hotel just now, we would have seen them. It's locked? There's no one here. Lucian! Lucian! That's Sylvain's voice! Lucian! Lucian! C come on! Wake up! <gasps> Emily! Emily! My brother! He's gonna be okay, right? He's, he's just unconscious. Like what happened to Edgar. I'm sorry, Mr. Sylvain. But we were too late this time. No, no, that's not... That's not possible. Traveler, Kale, Mr. Sylvain has gone through a huge shock. He needs some space to calm down. Could one of you take him next door? It's not good for him to look at his brother's body like this. Uh, of course. Leave it to me. Thank you both. Mr. Sylvain, let's get you up. Here, take my hand. Nice and slow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take things from here. Just focus on getting some rest. Here, this way. <laughs> Poor guy. He's like a shell of his former self. He may have made some bad decisions in life, but... Right now, Paimon can't help but feel sorry for him. Good person or bad, the death of a loved one is equally painful. All the moments he shared with his brother, every hardship and triumph they endured together, are now memories he has to carry alone. If Kyria really was behind this, then what exactly did he do to Lucian? Lucian can no longer speak, but the traces left behind by his death most certainly can. Traveler, I've got things covered here at the scene. 
I'll leave you to contact the sheriff. Who would have thought? Yesterday's case is still up in the air, and now this happens. Miss Emily, I heard you're an experienced forensic doctor. Have you been able to discover anything? Oh, I'm not actually a forensic doctor. I just happen to have some relevant knowledge. I did take a look, though. Judging by the temperature and rigidity of the body, it appears the time of death was sometime last night. I'd have to do a more thorough investigation to find out more. Then, would you mind helping us investigate? Before he left, Tainari said we could trust your judgment if something like this were to happen. Of course, I appreciate your trust. Many of the traces left behind at the scene will fade with time, so the sooner we investigate, the better. We'll help too. We don't know much about dead bodies, but you can leave the other clues to us. Pupils are dilated, skin is flushed. Hmm. No overt external injuries or signs of a struggle. Tell you the truth, the exhibition has left us quite short-handed. We're lucky to have your help. And the windows are shut tight, too! Seems like the only way to get in would have been through Sylvain's room. Like we've investigated as much as we can. Let's go report back to Emily and Shiam. So, did you find anything? Paimon can show you. Here, it'd be something like this. But. Entering through the room next door without alerting Sylvain... Wait, you don't think Sylvain could have been the one who... No, his reaction to the loss of his brother seemed genuine, and he doesn't have a motive. Then, what could have happened last night? I know Sylvain is still in shock, but he's our only available witness. <sighs> we have to take his statement. I agree. Also, I've made some new discoveries, so we might as well head next door and go through everything together. Mr. Sylvain, I need you to tell me everything you and your brother did since yesterday afternoon. Did you see or hear anything strange? After Kyria attacked Edgar, my brother and I were incredibly careful. We returned to our rooms and decided to lock all the doors leading to the hallway. The only door we kept unlocked was the one connecting our rooms. That way, if we heard any commotion coming from the other room, we could help each other. 
But I didn't hear any sort of commotion last night. Not a single noise. I woke up this morning, opened the door, and Lucian... Lucian was... So, no movement from the room next door. No forced entry via Sylvain's room. No signs of a struggle at the scene. And no external injury on Lucian's body. What kind of cause of death are we dealing with here? I did notice a few things about the body. Lucian's pupils were dilated and his skin was flushed. Very similar to Master's symptoms after the attack yesterday. There weren't any traces of liquid in his mouth or nose, so it's unlikely he was forced to ingest anything. The more plausible explanation is that he inhaled a substance without knowing it. And I'd say that substance was likely a goose. A goose? No, no that's not possible. In inhaling, a goose won't kill you. And anyway, it, it would have been for just one night. No. That's not what I meant. Emily, you ran your tests, didn't you? Go on. Tell everyone whether you found any poison. No. I didn't find any common toxins. <laughs> See? A goose is harmless. The market response proved that years ago. That may be true for most people, but not for everyone. Master! Edgar? You're up and about already? <coughs> Thanks to Emily. I'm out of the woods for now. Sylvain, no matter how hard you may try to hide it, the truth will always come to light. Edgar! Even if we could keep it a secret for another ten or twenty years, do you think Kyria would just let us be? No. He would never give up. Not if he's doing all of this for Yelena. <sighs> That's Vijava's real name. Yelena... It wasn't a scholar from Sumeru. She was an exiled Fatus from Snezhnaya. A Fatus? The Fatui. <gasps> well, th that means the elemental energy present in Auguste was... Ah, so you've already detected it. <sighs> well, Sylvain, looks like there's truly no reason to hide things now. Oh. The Auguste Flower was created with the mutative and distorting power of a delusion. A... Uh, a delusion? The Fatui, delusions... I never would have thought Auguste was hiding this many secrets. Born of a delusion, Auguste contained distorted elemental energy. A prolonged exposure over many years could have a harmful effect on the body. <laughs> That's enough, Edgar. I'll take it from here. At first, Yelena wanted to keep refining the perfume and the flower. But no one knew how long the perfume mania was going to last back then. It didn't have any effect on ordinary people anyway. Every day we postpone going to market was another day of lost earning potential. So you decided poisoning people was worth the risk? Listen, it's not like it was good for business. But all that talk about a goose being harmful over time... Yelena was just speculating. The impact was practically negligible. Unless you were particularly sensitive to elemental energy or had an entire bottle shoved down your throat like Edgar, you could use the product for decades and be completely fine. It may be true there are no records of a goose poisoning in Fontaine, but even if no one was acutely poisoned, willfully bringing a product to market despite explicit knowledge of its harmful effects is still a serious crime. 
That explains why you were so intent on keeping Yelena and Kyria's involvement a secret all this time, despite readily confessing to all your financial crimes. The Fatui, delusions, a goose. If the Marashase Phantom discovered the connection between the three, there would have been enough evidence to send you to the Fortress of Meripede for life. Ha! If I'd known coming to Sumeru would put a target on my back, I would have been more than happy to stay there. <laughs> At least that way, Lucian would still be alive. <sighs> oh, these years without any sign of Kyria, and he pops up out of nowhere the minute my brother and I get out of prison? It couldn't be any clearer who the kid's after. A goose was harmless before. The fact that it's killing people all of a sudden must be his doing as well. So there's bad blood between you. What about Yelena's death? Was that a cover-up too? A way to destroy evidence? I'll admit, we thought about it at one point. We took care to disguise the products circulating on the market, and no one was questioning Yelena's fake identity. But... If the Mara Chausse Phantom decided to look into the flower beds, it would have been the end. Yelena's ties to the Fatui, the role of the delusion, everything would have been exposed. Before we could even put our plan in motion, Yelena beat us to it. She burned all her flower beds and threw herself into the fire as well. But. but if her goal was to destroy evidence. There would have been no reason to do that to herself. Yeah, she could have just burned the flower beds and fled with her brother. I thought about it for a long time, but it wasn't until just now that I finally understood her reasoning. Everything she did, it was for her brother, Kyria. <sighs> One of the reasons they defected from the Fatui was the deterioration of Yelena's body due to her excessive use of a delusion. She didn't want her brother to follow in her footsteps after her death. After arriving in Fontaine, Yelena continued using the delusion to cultivate the Auguste flower, weakening her body even further. There were times when she couldn't even walk. So, she couldn't flee with her brother, because she was afraid of holding him back. If her true identity was exposed, she and her brother would face pressure from both Snezhnaya and Fontaine. The Auguste flower and Yelena's own corroded body both bore the mark of a delusion. There would have been no way to avoid suspicion. So, in the end, she burnt it all to ash, including herself. With all the evidence erased, Kyria was free to take the Mora and run. So the wealth you earned from Auguste, it wasn't destroyed in the fire. Yelena gave it to her brother? Most likely. Before Yelena died, she said if anything happened to her, she was going to leave everything to her brother. We just didn't realize she meant our cut as well. That's why Lucian and I were searching for Kyria, to take back our Mora and the Auguste flower. We just didn't realize Kyria was baiting us the whole time. It was all a trap. <laughs> but why is Kyria out for revenge anyway? Doesn't he know about Yelena's decision to sacrifice herself? I don't think he knew his sister was nearing death. Elena always wore heavy makeup around him to conceal her deteriorating appearance. She kept herself busy with work to keep out of sight. That way her brother wouldn't notice how she could barely walk. Then all I'll need to do is tell Kyria what really happened and then I'll give up on his revenge. I'm not so sure. Even if he knew the truth, he'd still find someone to blame. He might think Yelena was forced into using a delusion to cultivate a ghost, or something like that. It's hard to pull yourself out of that kind of hatred. 
Especially when you've been living in that headspace for so many years. Very true. Even if Yelena's death was her own choice, I wouldn't call myself innocent either. <laughs> Edgar! What are you talking about? Think about it, Sylvain. If we hadn't been in such a hurry to capitalize on the perfume mania all those years ago, do you think Yelena would have elected to take those risks? If we hadn't been so blinded by greed, so insistent on increasing the scale of the flower cultivation, do you think Yelena's health would have deteriorated as fast as it did? If we hadn't invited the Mara Chausse Phantom to our doorstep by breaking the law at every turn, Yelena could have survived. <laughs> she knew her limits. She knew her days were numbered. Maybe it was for her brother, but she was in it for the Mora just as much as us. We were just trying to earn a bit of Mora. And what, we deserve to die for that? Target me for being the mastermind, sure. But what about Lucian? He was just following my orders. Lucian's crime... Was it really so extreme that he had to pay for it with his life? <sighs> the only person that can answer that question is a judge. <sighs> Fine. I've said my piece anyway. Drag me back to Fontaine to stand trial. I don't care. <sighs> Three people from Fontaine, one from Snezhnaya, and a crime committed in Port Ormos. What a headache. Well, we can only wait until the Academia sends someone to deal with it. I'm guessing we'll have to contact Fontaine as well. In any case, we won't really know anything until tomorrow. <sighs> With the exhibition, we don't even have space in Port Ormos to detain anyone. Such a headache. Hmm. The hotel could suffice. You could station a few officers to keep an eye on Sylvain and myself. Although with Sylvain's mental state and my physical one, I don't think you need to worry about a jailbreak. Mr. Edgar, are you saying... If Sylvain is to stand trial, then I deserve the same fate. A crime is a crime, accomplice or not. I'd just like to take care of a few things before I go. Uh, say goodbye to my plants and all that. As for Sylvain, I'm sure he also has some goodbyes of his own. <sighs> Would you be willing to grant that request, Sheriff? Well, all right. I'll talk to the Academia. No matter who you were in Fontaine or what crimes you committed, the man we grew to know in Sumeru proved himself to be a good person. Your request is granted. You have my thanks, Sheriff. happen tonight? Oh, you mean the possibility that Kyria might try to finish what he started? Yeah, all we know is that he uses a goose to poison people, but we still have no idea how to catch him in the act. If he targets Sylvain or Edgar again, we might not be able to stab him. That may be true, but what if we can take advantage of his desperation? If we take advantage of this situation and lure him in on purpose, we might finally have the chance to talk to him. Master, no. That's too dangerous. <laughs> so, that's your plan. If Kyria learns we're being taken away tomorrow, his last chance to enact his revenge would be tonight. In other words, you want to use us as bait to capture him. Capture? Not necessarily. I just want to talk. What? Are you afraid of him? Afraid? <laughs> this is my only chance to make him pay for what he did. 
I'm spending the rest of my life in prison anyway. I can't just sit back and let him ride off into the sunset with our fortune. There's no way I'm letting him get away with it. Not after what he did to Lucian. <coughs> As for the danger, everyone else just needs to make preparations in advance to protect us. I'll admit, it could work. We just need to spread the word that Edgar and Sylvain are leaving tomorrow. Then I'll station some of my men around the hotel. If we have your assistance as well, our chance of success would be even higher. I still have some reservations, but if you insist on carrying out this plan, I won't deny you my help. I'll also keep watch. Although I think Sylvain and myself should remain alone in our respective rooms. If Kyria noticed another person in the room, he might decide to turn back. And besides, it's possible he's already transformed Auguste into a potent toxic gas. Uh, you mean if he doesn't see a way to get his hands on the two of you, he might get so desperate that he'll just start using Auguste on everybody? If that were to happen, everyone's standing guard. Even the innocent citizens in Port Ormos would all be in danger. That's why everyone else needs to keep to the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> You're still recovering. You need to rest. <sighs> this old pack of bones doesn't bounce back like it used to. I suppose I'll just have to leave the rest to you. All right, we can figure out a plan to keep watch later. Right now, I say we split up and start spreading that information before it's too late. Have you heard? Mr. Edgar's been detained. He's being taken away tomorrow. What? He's the one who helped craft all the fragrances for our shop. He taught my child how to make perfume. How could this happen? He hasn't been convicted yet. Let's just wait and see what the court has to say. Oh, everyone on the street is talking about the rumors. No matter where Kiri is hiding, he must have heard them by now. Let's head back to the hotel and take a break. We can see how the other preparations are going while we're at it. Sheriff Xiam wants to talk to you and the Traveler about our plans for the Night Watch. Thank you, Kale. But first, here, I prepared a kind of herbal tea that helps calm the spirit. Why don't you have some? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I'm okay. Oh, it's not good to be so tense, especially when we've got a long night ahead of us. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I couldn't help but notice that something seems to be on your mind. Uh, was... was it that obvious? You seem very preoccupied with Kyria's revenge. If there's anything you want to talk about, I'm happy to listen. Oh! Uh... I, uh... Hey, Emily! Kale! Oh, are we interrupting something? No, not at all. This will be easier to talk through with you here anyway. I've just been thinking. 
If Kyria has the capacity to commit murder while remaining completely undetected, why didn't he target Sylvain along with Lucian last night? There was just a single door separating them. If his intention was to target both brothers, then there was barely anything standing in his way. When I accompanied Sylvain to his room after Lucian died, and saw how distraught he was, I suddenly realized... Maybe Kyria did that on purpose. Maybe he wanted Sylvain to experience the pain of losing a loved one before he completed his ultimate revenge. So did he attack Edgar as a warning then? To scare Sylvain and Lucian? Based on what we've heard about Kyria, that may very well be the case. Losing his sister all those years ago. What has been going through his head? What has he been forced to endure? Whenever I get to thinking like that, I just can't help but wonder. If I were in his place, would I be able to let go of that hatred? I I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't think like that. Not after everything he's done. But I just can't help it. There's nothing wrong with the way you're feeling. Empathy is a part of human nature. In all my years of cleaning up crime scenes, I've witnessed countless families mourn their loved ones. Their cries of devastation and anger still echo through my mind. Even now. Some of them even try to stop me, begging me not to erase the last remnants of their loved ones. But getting swept up in those emotions will corrupt your judgment. Surround yourself with fragrance for too long, and your sense of smell will become dull. Allow yourself to be consumed by your emotions, and you lose the ability to think rationally. So while you hold on to that sense of empathy, you also need to ask yourself, do Sylvain and Lucian really deserve to die? How much did they truly know about the Fatui and the delusion? Did they force Yelena to make those decisions? Answering those questions requires a lot of time and evidence, while a single act of vengeance can put those answers forever out of our reach. I've witnessed a lot of deaths in Fontaine. When someone dies, a certain amount of information can be inferred from the traces left behind at the scene. But generally speaking, death will just leave most questions unanswered, and the whole picture ever incomplete. Once you're consumed by hatred, it will become next to impossible to think about things that way. For someone like Kyria, I'm sure right and wrong lost all meaning a long time ago. You're right. The fact that we can approach these questions from this perspective isn't because we're more rational than them. It's because we're fortunate enough not to have suffered that kind of loss. But. That also makes us perfectly positioned to stand on the outside and try to pull them back from the brink before it's too late. I understand Kyria's decision, but I still want to stop him. Master, Sylvain, and Kyria. <sighs> they all deserve to survive. Huh. The fortunate and the unfortunate. <sighs> Emily! Traveler! Huh? Edgar, you're here too? Oh, it's you two! Um, didn't you head back to your room to rest, Edgar? Is it really okay for you to be out and about like this? <laughs> A little exercise never hurt anyone. Besides... I don't have much time left in Sumeru, so I'd like to take care of my plants while I still can. We could do that for you, Master. No need. I've grown attached to these flowers, and this is my last chance to say goodbye. Come tomorrow. I'll be happy to entrust their care to, to you. I would imagine Sheriff Sham is here for a more important reason. Uh, the Night Watch! You mentioned earlier that we still need to confirm our plans. That's right. I've stationed some of my men around the surrounding area, but 
We still don't have anyone standing guard next to Sylvain's room. Exactly. After some discussion, we concluded that Sylvain has the highest risk of being attacked next. You're the most skilled fighter here, Traveler. And Emily's expertise is sure to come in handy in a pinch. That's why I want you two stationed next to Sylvain's room. So, are you up for it? Sounds perfectly reasonable. Oh, I'll be glad to have your help tonight, Traveler. Given up on his revenge? Hmm, guess we'll have to keep at it. <sighs> Still nothing unusual. Hyman took a peek into the room next door and Sylvain's already sleeping. Perhaps Kiri's true motive was simply forcing Sylvain to confess his crimes. No, that can't be right. If all he wanted was for Sylvain to be convicted for his true crimes, he could have tipped off the Mara Chassé Phantom years ago. There must be something we're missing. Hmm, something extremely important. Maybe we just need to calm down a little. Uh, how about some tea? That herbal blend from earlier was pretty tasty. You're right. Um, maybe we can look for a different distraction then. Like, uh... Like looking at the flowers. Oh, there's a glaze lily here. Paimon didn't notice it earlier. Flowers, glaze lilies, incense. <gasps> oh no! Sylvain's room, quick! Wait, what? Hey, did you hear? Someone was attacked again last night. It was the older of the Merchant Brothers, right? Yeah, I think his name was uh, Sylvain. Poor guy was murdered in cold blood. First it was Mr. Edgar, then that merchant named Lucy, and now this. Listen up, everyone. This is an active crime scene. Please, no loitering. It's been three days and they haven't even caught a glimpse of the guy. What is going on? Do you think it could be the work of an evil spirit? I mean, how do you get away with something like that with so many people watching? Keep it moving, everyone. No loitering. <coughs> I suppose I'm next. <sighs> you don't know that. Kyria already attacked you once, and you survived. Perhaps he doesn't consider your crime to be worthy of death. You were the only reason I managed to survive, Emily. Uh, I never did thank you for that, did I? Even if I wasn't there, Tai Nari was also in the vicinity. He would have been able to help. Is that so? I suppose I'm a very fortunate person, then. I have exceptional students, caring friends, and the respect of my peers. If it is indeed my time to go, then I'll die without regrets. But Kyria has nothing. Helena is gone. Now, his enemies are, too. It really makes you wonder if there's even a reason to keep on living. If you really want an answer, I suppose you'll have to ask Kyria himself once we finally catch him. Ah, well, I hope it all goes well. Emily, there's something else I'd like to ask of you. With everything that's happened, 
holding the exhibition is off the table now. But so many flowers were transported here for the show, some of them thousands of miles away from their homeland. I can't let them wither away with no one to care for them. Whether Kyria gets to me first, or I'm sent back to Fontaine to stand trial, I won't be around to look after them. I know it's a lot to ask, but could I entrust them to your care? Of course, Master. Really? Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Now I truly have nothing to worry about. Sheriff Sham still has some questions for me, so I've got to go. Uh, go ahead. Best not to keep him waiting. He can be quite uh, impatient. I'm sorry, Master. any trouble yeah that's true traveler I had my men start spreading the information you requested the crowd is gone now too but I have to admit I'm not really sure what's going on after listening to Emily's plan I started getting the materials together and arranging personnel I barely had a second to spare last night to be honest I'm still not sure how the crime was committed that night The key clue was right in front of us the entire time! <laughs> let's go! We'll show you where the culprit hit a goose! Wasn't this incense originally in Lucian's room? It must... I've heard of it before. It's a flower from Liu, right? Well, did you know? It only blooms at night. Emily, you're back! Exactly as expected. A flower that only blooms at night. Ah, like the Neelitpala Lotus. Exactly. Although, the Neelopala Lotus wouldn't be a good substitute in this scenario. When it's closed, the gaps between the petals are too large. That's why Kyria chose the Glaze Lily as his mechanism. He would start by preparing an Agus sample. If poured into the flower pot, the liquid would seep into the soil. That might prevent the substance from taking effect. There's a sticky substance on the edge of the flower petals. It's one I recognize. If you stick the petals together with slime condensate, then, in the daytime, the glaze lily would act almost like a hidden container. That's right! He applied a diluted form of slime condensate to the petals to stick them together and enclosed a sample of a goose in the center. 
That way, the agoose would remain trapped inside during the daytime, unable to seep between the petals and evaporate into the air. This also allowed the culprit to plant the poison well in advance while his targets remained oblivious. However, the diluted slime condensate wouldn't be viscous enough to prevent the petals of the glaze lily from opening at night. So by nightfall, the flower would bloom, thereby forcing the target to inhale the agoose trapped inside. And Kyria could execute his revenge without having to step foot inside the room during the night. By the next morning, the sample of a goose would have nearly fully evaporated. The glaze lily would have already closed its petals and any lingering odor would be concealed by the fragrance of the other flowers in the room. Wait a second. You're telling me this version of a goose is so toxic, inhaling the minute amount trapped inside a flower is enough to kill a grown man? And how did Edgar even survive ingesting a whole bottle of the stuff? That's because a goose is just as dangerous now as it was all those years ago. The level of toxicity has never changed. Only a small subset of people are truly at risk. Ah, uh, you mean people who are sensitive to elemental energy. So it's just some sort of happy coincidence that Sylvain and Lucian are allergic to the stuff? That can't be right. They were involved in the operation all those years ago. If the stuff gave them a bad reaction, they would have known from the very start. I wouldn't use the word allergic, necessarily. It's more like they're susceptible to its effects. But that distinction isn't important right now. You can think of it this way. It's not that Sylvain and Lucian are innately sensitive to elemental energy, but that Kyria found a way to ensure that they would be. The incense I smelled earlier seemed familiar. In Sumeru, scholars use spirit borneal to aid meditation and stimulate their connection to the Dendro Archon. Alchemically produced essential oils, the primordial seawater that caused unrest in Fontaine not too long ago. All of those are substances that can heighten your sensitivity to elemental energy. gave us a lot of trouble when we first came to Sumeru. Ah, oh, yes. I definitely remember that. In Sumeru, it's not uncommon to use incense indoors, so its presence wouldn't arouse suspicion. The flowers in the room could also serve to mask the scent. Flowers were pretty important to this plan, huh? The glazed lily is native to Liwa. It would be completely unnatural to have one here in Sumeru if it weren't for the exhibition. What a coincidence. Actually, it's not a coincidence at all. No wonder he was willing to pay a small fortune to rent out the hotel. He probably used the more Yelena left him, don't you think? That money was supposed to set him free. But in the end, it was just a tool for his revenge. There's a saying among forensic doctors in Fontaine. Every step you take leaves a mark. But up until this point, we haven't been able to detect any trace of Curia's activities. That's not because he was coming and going undetected, or because he's some kind of evil spirit, but because he's been disguised as someone else this entire time. Creating such an intricate mechanism out of a glaze lily. Setting up the spirit Borneal in advance. And arranging for Sylvain and Lucian to stay at the hotel. It all points to one person. The expert in charge of the entire exhibition. Kyria and Edgar are one and the same. But... Kyria was only in his teens back then. He wouldn't even be 40 years old by now. Edgar's lived here for so many years. Even if he changed his appearance, going that long without giving anything away, it would be impossible. B bad news, Sheriff. Mr. Edgar was attacked. What? A dark shadow-like figure just ran out of his room. It was giving off a really ominous aura. 
But before we could even react, the figure up and disappeared like some sort of ghost or something. By the time we got a look inside the room, Mr. Edgar was gone. Do you think Kyria kidnapped him? I need you to think very carefully about this. Are you certain that figure wasn't Edgar himself? Uh, I mean, Mr. Edgar was so frail. I don't see how he could have moved that fast. It would seem Master decided to tap into an ill-advised source of power. What? But that's so dangerous with the condition he's in. Uh, it's... But why? Why would he do that? He's already accomplished his revenge. No. If his aim was to target everyone who had a hand in Yelena's death... If he left Sylvain alive yesterday, not out of a desire to see him suffer, but to confirm the truth about why Yelena chose to die... Then... there's still one target left. The shadow-like figure ran in the direction of the elevator, and my partner immediately chased after them. We should hurry, before they're forced to confront each other! It's a ghost! It's all right. Please, calm down and take a deep breath. Can you tell us what you saw? <sighs> I saw a black shadow. It ran right past me. How could... How could something like that happen in broad daylight? This is terrifying. No! Don't come any closer! <sighs> if we go any further, we'll be out of Port Ormos! There'll be hardly it's all right. I can detect a faint whiff of the scent from here. I would say he passed by this location not too long ago. Hmm, it's this way. Please, follow me. The scent is getting stronger. This must be the place. Are you all right? Were, were you attacked? Uh, no. No, I'm all right. I was just chasing after that figure, and then all of a sudden, I didn't feel so hot. Let me take a look. The air definitely feels heavy. It smells nice, but for some reason, it's hard to breathe. <laughs> this feeling, I've encountered it before. Everything looks all right. It was probably just the stress of the chase, combined with the impact of the environment. 
A bit of rest would do you some good. I can't rest. Mr. Edgar is still in there. He taught my sister how to make perfume. He's a good man. I can't just abandon him to die by curious hand. Oz, you need to calm down and listen to me. Edgar is the one we're after. He and Kiria are the same person. But how is that possible? I thought you said Kiria was in his 30s. Mr. Edgar is 70-something. Changing your appearance to look decades older, that doesn't seem possible. That's precisely why he had to resort to extraordinary measures to age himself. Kyria used a delusion to bring back the Auguste flower, corroding his body in the process, just like his older sister. No. He couldn't have. Mr. Edgar has been in Port Ormost for years. If someone started impersonating him all of a sudden, we would have noticed. And what if the impersonation started before he ever set foot in Sumeru? I... Uh... I've yet to confirm it. But I suspect Kyria killed the real Edgar in Fontaine not long after his release from prison. While Edgar was incarcerated, Kyria started making preparations to replace him, including forcefully aging his body, studying perfumery, and planning the real Edgar's demise. The new Edgar then decided to relocate to Sumeru, seemingly out of an innocuous desire to let go of the past. He even left perfume making in favor of mentoring students, but these decisions were all for a specific purpose, the need to distance himself from anyone who might see through the facade. And Sumeru fit the bill to a T, with no one around to question his identity. All he had to do was grow a beard, don a pair of glasses, make a few minor alterations to his appearance, and everyone would believe he was exactly who he claimed, Edgar, a perfumer from Fontaine. As the years went by, he removed his disguise little by little and continued to refine his skills. It would have been a gradual process, one that ensured no one around him would notice anything unusual. That explains why Sylvain said he barely recognized Edgar back at the hotel! He aged himself decades beyond his years just so he could accomplish his revenge! Is that even worth it? I... I need to find Mr. Edgar. He's not that kind of person. He can't be. <coughs> what you really need is to get out of here and rest. No, I... I can keep going. Wait! This environment is likely being influenced by the delusion. Any discomfort, no matter how slight, should not be treated lightly. I know how to relieve your symptoms, Mr. Ooze. Please come with me and rest. I'm sure Kyria... No, Edgar wouldn't want any more innocent people implicated in all this. Kale's right. The Traveler and I will take things from here. From our brief exposure to a goose, it would seem the substance has little effect on us. This leads me to believe those blessed with a vision or capable of wielding elemental power are more resistant to the effects of abnormal elemental energy. In other words, this environment doesn't pose as much of a risk to us. Actually, now that I think about it, this stronghold likely has multiple points of entry. If the target were to escape from a different point of entry, that might allow him to evade capture. I hate to trouble you, but we need people to survey the perimeter. I... <sighs> Thanks. Hear that? We're heading out. There's work to be done. Oh, ooze, head back to Port Ormos and start gathering reinforcements. <clears throat> Got it. Traveler, Emily, Paimon, please be careful. For someone whose only purpose in life is revenge, there's no telling what they'll do when there's no reason to move forward. Don't worry. This isn't the end. Not for us, or for Kyria. We're not going to let a goose kill anyone else. It's time for the mythos to fade into obscurity. Huh? 
monsters. Perhaps they were attracted here by the increased level of elemental energy. Before, they must also have been created with the power of a delusion. Hmm. It seems to be avoiding us, and there's no other way forward. Perhaps we could try luring it to the edge of the cliff. that statement is truer than you know, Paimon. Using a delusion comes at a cost. Not just time, but the time you have left to live. But why would Kyria need this many Agust flowers? He only needed a few bottles of Agust to carry out his plan, right? Perhaps hatred wasn't the only emotion fueling his obsession with Agust. Not long ago, he told me he didn't want all the flowers transported to Sumeru to wither away in a foreign land. But Kyria betrayed Snezhnaya, abandoned Fontaine, and lived his entire life in Sumeru under the guise of someone else. For someone with nowhere to call home, perhaps dying among a bed of a goose flowers just like his sister is the best homecoming he could ask for. Transfixed. Count. This is where you fall. Overruled. Destroys seeds. Huh. Quite the ecological marvel. Let's head back to the place where the seeds first appeared.
The scent of flowers is getting stronger. We're almost at the end. <laughs> the scent of flowers is getting stronger. We're almost at the end. <laughs> Did they catch up that fast? <clears throat> no. My strength is just waning. But it doesn't matter. This is far enough. <laughs> This is a garden of a goose flowers, but it's not mine. It's the one that was set on fire all those years ago in Fontaine. Y Elena? Y Elena! You tried to hide it from me, but I... I always understood. The reason why you continued to use the delusion... The reason why you set your garden on fire... It was all because of me! I shouldn't have listened to you that day. I shouldn't have taken the mora and ran. But... By the time I realized something wasn't right... There was nothing left. The flowers were gone. And so were you. I know I'm almost 20 years too late. I should have come looking for you earlier. I should have... I should have died with you that day! Yelena? Uh. Yelena! No! Don't leave me! Please! Yelena! <sighs> Emily? I... I'm alive. No, that's not possible. I saw her. Helena, we were together. That was an illusion, likely brought about by the residual toxin in your body coupled with the pollen in the air, neither of which are fatal. No. The amount of August I drank, it should have been enough. A fake, but uh, how? We started making the preparations last night with one goal in mind. To create a perfect accord. The accord is the, the basis, basis of, of perfume, perfume making, making. The, the product, product in its, its most primitive form. Ambergris mixed with cedar wood, rounded out with a base note of agar wood. This is... the scent of leather? Exactly. We're unable to extract essential oils from leather, but by combining other raw materials, we can recreate its essence. That is the purpose of an accord. Does that mean you can recreate any scent in the whole world? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid not. Certain fragrances in this world are simply one of a kind. Hmm. That quality is what draws people in and fuels their obsessions. If I wear a goose to the ball, I'll also be one of a kind. Our competitor already got their hands on it. Oh, it doesn't matter how much it costs. I have to buy something, have to buy something better. Right? This fragrance will be one of a kind no more. Myths can be deconstructed. Miracles can be recreated. All it takes is skill, experience, limitless exploration, and a little patience. The only thing left is determining where the real Auguste is hidden. Pretending to be attacked means he's not free to move around. Auguste must be hidden within reach. 
took a peek through the window earlier and his house was packed with flowers. The curator commissioned a flower pot from Kasharawar, capable of retaining heat and moisture. Perfumes are as beautiful as flowers, and equally as delicate. When stored, you must take care to control the temperature and keep them away from direct sunlight. Did you get all that, Emily? I got it. the bottles of August, and then lied to me about Sylvain's death. Convincing you that your revenge had been completed was the easiest way to get you to let down your guard. Impossible. Even if you found a way to switch out the bottles, there's no way you could have made an accord. If August was so easy to replicate, Yelena wouldn't have. It was a combination of rainbow roses, glaze lilies, and Cecilia's. Those ingredients would have conflicted with each other if you tried to combine them in the past. But recently, we found a way for them to work together. Rainbow roses, glaze lilies, and Cecilia's? A goose was created over ten years ago. All this time, people never stopped analyzing it, never stopped trying to recreate it. Perfumery techniques are advancing day by day. We found better ways to extract essential oils, separate oils and fats. We even discovered new ways to combine fragrances together. The mythos surrounding a goose may have been untouchable almost 20 years ago, but now it's time for it to become a thing of the past. The past? You've been working as a perfumer for all these years. You should have always known that it is possible to make an accord, even if only in theory. But the meaning you assigned to a goose became so inflated, you allowed yourself to get lost in it, just like the perfume mania that captivated the public all those years ago. You believed in its divinity and grandeur. You believed it was entirely one of a kind. Your obsession with the goose is also what allowed us to predict how you intended your plan to end, and to make preparations in advance. We just didn't expect it to happen so fast. <laughs> well, you hit the nail on the head now, didn't you? So... Sylvain isn't dead. Since you've been preparing your accord since last night, I assume you've also figured out my method, then. That means the news of Sylvain's death. The crowd gathered outside the hotel this morning. It was all an act you put on with the Sheriff. Yes. If we hadn't, you might have resorted to the delusion out of desperation, or continued to use your spirit borneal and a goose combination to wreak havoc. Who knows? Maybe I would have just offed myself then and there. I know if you had things your way, you would carry the truth of Edgar's demise and the secrets of this garden to the grave, but I'm sorry, Master. I don't want to see any more death. <sighs> Sylvain only inhaled a small amount of poison. He's being detained as we speak. All the crimes he concealed back then will be exposed in a court of law for everyone to see. And all his secrets will be revealed. The same goes for you as well. Is that so? Well, I suppose I'll be spending the rest of my days in a prison cell then. Whoa, he accepted that kind of fast. I don't feel the need to justify my actions, nor do I intend to repent for them. I did what I set out to do. I 
may have lost in the end. But it was my choice every step of the way. And if I could do it all over again... <laughs> but there's no going back, is there? Careful, everyone. This environment is dangerous. I'll lead the way. So stick close and hurry up. We can't let Edgar die. Looks like I'm almost out of time. Although, I do have one final question, Emily. Of course, Master. The combination you used to make your accord. How did you figure it out? The scent of a goose is complex and varied, yet the main ingredient consists of a single variety of flour. So, as I was analyzing the sample yesterday, I got to thinking, what if the scent of the Auguste flower was already imbued with that complexity during its cultivation? You're saying Yelena designed Auguste to have the scent of multiple flowers? Rainbow roses, glaze lilies, Cecilia's. The perfumers of the past knew that if you combine their essential oils directly, they would just cancel each other out. It was a conundrum they could never solve. But if you cultivate a new flower species that intrinsically carries the unique features of those three scents, you can bypass that issue entirely. It goes without saying that for that time, this idea was a stroke of genius. Rainbow roses, glaze lilies, and Cecilia's. <laughs> those really do seem like flowers you would choose, Yelena. Did you know? Miss Emily's releasing a new perfume! <laughs> right! I heard about that! I think it's called Yelena! Seems like everyone in Fontaine is talking about the new perfume you're releasing! I was hoping to release it without such a fuss, but the news spread way faster than I expected. I just hope it won't become the source of some new myth. Especially after all the work we did to demystify a goose. I did, although I made a few modifications to the formula to make the scent more pleasant and long lasting. I actually brought a few samples with me today. I hope they're to your liking. Also, I was hoping you could try out the fragrance before I officially release it and tell me your thoughts. Of course! A good sense of taste and sense of smell go hand in hand, you know? Just leave it to Paimon! Oh, it smells great! <laughs> it's all right. All feedback is worth considering. Besides, when it comes to perfume, commenting on whether it smells good is the most straightforward assessment you can ask for. There doesn't always have to be a deeper meaning. Right! Do those flowers have some special meaning? Hearing their names seem to have an effect on him. Hmm, if I had to guess, I'd say it probably has something to do with the language of flowers. The language of flowers? Oh, we've heard of that before! Paimon remembers hearing something like, uh, the Cecilia represents the true feelings of the prodigal son? What each flower is said to represent varies by person and across different moments in history. The same is true for the flowers that make up the scent of a goose. After returning to Fontaine, I did some research, and it turns out the meanings of those three flowers can be reassembled to form a single phrase. <clears throat> Forget the past and keep on living. 
Perhaps that's the legacy Yelena always intended, not the nobility and grandeur most people associate with the Goost. You think Kyria knew about that? I paid him a visit before his trial and explained what I found, but he didn't seem to care. Who knows? Maybe she didn't mean anything by it at all. That was his response. Yelena is gone. We'll never know what she was thinking. We can look for meaning all we want, but it'll never be anything but conjecture. Even if that is what she was trying to say, I would never be able to forget her. Avenging her death? That was the meaning I chose for my life. Kyria cultivated his revenge like a flower. He was committed to making it bloom, even if, in the end, it didn't bear the fruit he was hoping for. In any case, he did want me to pass along his thanks. Thank you for saving my life. For giving me the chance to learn that a goose could have carried a very different meaning. Love and hatred are a privilege of the living. When someone dies, their thoughts, feelings, and intentions die with them. In that sense, what a goose truly represents in the language of flowers will forever remain a mystery. But even if it's only a conjecture, I would like to believe my own interpretation. The meaning we give to flowers, the symbolism we assign to our perfumes, they're constantly twisted and exploited in our imperfect world. And yet, at the very outset, they're born from the simplest and most beautiful desires we hold in our heart. <laughs>